So the plan today is to do some some swimming, some free diving, in hopes of finding either turtles, fish, something. Something to see. We'll have to go out far enough to where the, uh, the waves aren't breaking in order to in order to actually have visibility in the water. But uh, yeah, you can see this is not like a uh, commonly traveled street. Here's another road that leads out to the, uh, the main street in the center here. We're very close to El Bolivar. So the only thing passing through here are the occasional motorcycle and uh, these taxis. <laughs> well, how about this? So we follow this little secret path and it takes us right to paradise. So the problem is is uh, this first beach here that you're gonna see. So what I wanna do is dive with the camera and hopefully see some wildlife, some aquatic marine life. Um, but they're doing lots of surfing over here. So not sure how I'm gonna handle this. Not sure uh, what's gonna be the best option here. Ooh, this sand is hot. All right, also lots of rocks. But it looks like over here, if I get out just past that point, no surfers. And maybe I'll be able to, oh my gosh, this sand is freaking hot. I gotta get closer to where it's a little wet over here. It is really hot. Burn the bottom of my feet. All right, so come out here a little more. I will be able to, uh, oh gosh, much better. Now you can see the, where the sand is actually wet. <clears throat> it's 100 times better. So here, have a look behind me and you can see some other hotels that are actually right on the beach. And yeah, from here you can do all the activities. You can learn how to surf. There's a surf school. You can, which I'm probably gonna do in the next couple days. Um, I mean, why not? It's like right here. Heck, I might even stay another week. I mean, the thing is I've met, I made so many contacts here and everything's just like so convenient. You know, at this point I've changed hotels, I don't know, three or four times. And I got to know, you know, I've gotten to know the city, where the restaurants are that I like, found a comfortable place to stay, and made some friends. I mean, that's when it becomes hard to leave. And also you ask yourself, well, why? Why would I keep going? So, well, why keep going? Uh, it depends. If you're limited on travels, then yeah, you keep going. But uh, my trip is kind of open-ended, unplanned, and it's situations like this that allow for these unplanned trips where you can really, you know, take advantage of the, you know, no planning because you can pretty much, pretty much do whatever you want. So when good things come up, you can stay a little longer. And that may or may not be uh, what I decide to do here. But just gonna take it day by day. So, so what else can you do here? You can ride a horse on the beach. You can uh, rent a four-wheeler. You can go and do the uh, sea turtle viewing tour thing. But you can kind of do that on your own. You just have to know where to go. And the reality of it is from here, probably not gonna see a whole lot. But if we go down this way, where the, uh, the pier is, then you can see lots and lots of sea turtles. So I'll see, maybe I'll walk down that way later. But for right now, I wanna go swimming out here where all the other people are and uh, see how far I can get out and see what the visibility is like and hopefully uh, see something. I probably should have brought the wrist strap for the camera, but uh, I didn't, so I'll have to be careful. All right, time to put these goggles on. Yeah, water's pretty cold. Gotta watch out for rocks. 
Gotta watch out for rocks because when the waves, ow, yeah, there's rocks. I'm gonna have to float. Ah, oh, that's gonna be ideal. Okay, I'm getting scared now. Cause I don't want the, uh, to get damaged by the freaking rocks. My saying is, quickest way to end a vacation is to get injured. So that's not what I'm trying to do here. And I can see that people are over here mostly that are going out, so. What I gotta do is get in the water at a good point where I can float and that way be above the rocks so that nothing is touching the floor. No part of my body is touching the floor of the, uh, of the water. And then just, you know, stay afloat and swim. So let's see here. Yeah, there were lots of rocks over there. That was not good. And then what happens when the waves break, if it's strong enough, it'll knock you over and uh, you can fall into a rock and get injured. Looks like it stays pretty shallow all the way out here because these people, you can see how they're walking. My plan is to swim out a little bit, a little ways, in hopes of uh, getting deep enough to where the fish are. Highly unlikely there'll be sea turtles over here because it's not deep enough, but you never know. It's gotta stay away from the surfers too. I wouldn't want one of their uh, one of their fins to uh, come s flying uh, past me and spread, uh, you know, hit my head or something like that. All right. Oh. All right. Getting a little deeper. And I'm not feeling any rocks, so that's good. Time to go under. Alright, so as you can see, still not a whole lot of visibility at this point. Um, we're not a whole lot of ways out. Um, but I thought at this point, I might have visibility. The problem is, I don't want jet skis or anything like that to come out here where, you know, I'm underwater. And they're looking for the group of people and their vision tends to gravitate towards a large group and then they miss me <laughs> and then an accident happens so I got to be kind of careful out here but uh, at this point here I'm on my tippy toes so I'm gonna have to start uh, swimming uh, and the good thing is I don't feel any rocks but uh, yeah even when this wave comes up like I can't see over the horizon of these people so they can't see me either if they get close so I got to be a little careful careful here Waves are starting to pick up. All right. Um, but yeah, you can still you can see that the, the the visibility here is poor because there's still lots of sand in the water. So I don't know how much farther I can go out. Uh, how much further I have to go out in order to not have the sand, you know, mixing in with the water and have some visibility. But uh, we'll see. I don't like I don't like zero visibility because it's kind of uncomfortable you don't know where the bottom is you don't know where the animals are lurking or if there's any kind of you know rocks and stuff like that all right so you can see where we're at uh i don't know 100 meters off the uh the beach i don't know if you can see these buildings over here but they uh they're all damaged there was like uh some big storms that came through here a while back so a lot of those buildings suffered major damage, but you know, there was actually payback for them because they're technically not supposed to build within 100 uh, meters of the beach. So yeah, time to go for a dive. Oh, there's 
no visibility. Oh well, it was worth a try. But yeah, no visibility. Really gotta be careful not to uh, drop the camera here. So, if you ever are stuck out at sea and you lose your breath, you can, uh, you can float on your back, take a deep breath in, and spread your arms and legs out, and you can float on top of the water, <sighs> just like I'm doing now. So yeah, if you're not familiar with salt, salt water, uh, it's a, you're a lot more buoyant in salt water as compared with fresh water. So what that means is that you can float much easier. So if you're ever in trouble, you can just lay on your back, spread your arms and legs out, breathe slowly, and uh, chances are you'll float nicely above the water with a little effort. Another trick, another trick we were taught is that if you have a, a shirt on, you know, if you fall in from a, a boat or something, well, I can feel some minor rip current, minor rip current that's kind of pulling me out as the waves kind of come back in from the shore. Yeah, there's a rip current here, interesting. All right. Don't want to fight the rip current. Just gotta ride it. Pull it in. So the uh, the currents out here are dangerous. Uh, I was swimming out there, and the lady thought. It would be fun to go out there and uh, she was asking for help. She wanted me to help her. And now it's running out of strength, so I called for the lifeguards to help. And uh, yeah, they came out and we're good. Wow, so these, uh, these currents are no joke. Yeah, the lady was like, can you help me? Can you help me? And I wasn't sure if she was serious. And I didn't realize how how deep we were getting. Yeah, there was a rip current there and it pulled us out away from the beach a couple hundred uh, a couple hundred meters. Wow, that's no joke. Got to be careful around here. Oh, I'm glad she's all right. There's three lifeguards that came out there to help her. But uh, man, I couldn't do it alone. That's for sure. Because I was struggling myself. I had no flotation device. Where the surfers are at, they're uh, taking advantage of these big waves now. The the beach out there, it <laughs> out there it's pretty shallow, and then like the rocks break right here, so the the waves pull you in, and there's not a rip current over there. But here in the beach, the rip current is dangerous. It pulls you out. I can feel it pulling me out again. Wow, that lady was she would have drowned if they didn't come out here. Wow, that was not cool. Yeah, I can feel the water pulling me out again. So if you're out there and your feet can't touch the ground, then it just keeps pulling you out further and further. So what they say is to swim to the left or to the, you know, to the one side opposite of the rip current and you'll be able to avoid it. In that case, if we were to swim out towards the, uh, the surfers, we would have been all right. Like 
like that, the uh, the water's calm again. So yeah, just out of nowhere, you get those dangerous rip currents. That was scary. Gosh, I was not expecting that at all. I think they were just uh, having fun. They saw me out there and they thought it would be okay. But no. So, wow. Lesson learned. No joke. Once your feet can't touch, your uh, your life's at risk. It's getting treacherous. Uh oh. Oh no. <laughs> wow. Well, after what I just experienced, uh, I think it's safe to say, safe to say that it's unsafe, <laughs> because there's rip currents here. Lots of people on the beach, and if that lady went under and started taking in water, I don't know how long. Uh, she would have lasted. So, yeah, I, I would imagine people drown here more than uh, more than should. Got to be careful. Wow. I mean, even me, I know how to swim, and I was getting pretty exhausted out there. I felt the rip current, you know, as soon as I mentioned it, and before I realized. You know what was actually happening you know i could feel it but it wasn't until the lady you know said can you help me that i realized how far we were being dragged out and you know how how extreme the the situation was but uh yeah that sea is no joke when you can't touch the floor anymore you're pretty much effed and you gotta swim off to the side you know you're left or the right and uh kind of what I tried to do but it wasn't easy definitely wasn't easy you know panic sets in it's got to remain calm and wait for the rip current to pass you lay on your uh, back and spread your arms and and legs out so that you're more buoyant and uh, and if it comes down to it you've got to uh, you know scream for help which was why it's a lot safer to swim at places with uh, lifeguards. So they ended up needing three lifeguards to help the lady back in. And the young, a young man on a surfboard came out to save the, uh, to help the boy. And the boy seemed like he was, he wasn't struggling too much. He was able to swim, but sometimes you just can't fight the rip current. I mean, it's just gonna keep taking you out further and further. Yeah, and that's that. So, try not to think about that anymore. I'm gonna go take the uh, secret path back to the hotel and drop the, uh, drop the valuables off, drop the camera and whatnot so I can go back to the beach and enjoy in safety. Wow. Yeah, that was... Uh, that was pretty scary. Anyhow, I need some water. When you drink a little bit of that salt water, you know, if it gets in your mouth by accident, it kind of burns the back of your throat. I think salt water is also dehydrating. It takes uh, moisture out of your body. So let's go put these, this stuff away and uh, enjoy, enjoy these big waves. Maybe I'll even look into uh, renting a surfboard. I don't know. See, so yeah, location doesn't get much better than this. Got this secret little path. Hey, doggy. Takes us back to Harmony. Whew. Wow. Yeah, no motorcycles getting through there. That's just for people only. All right. Get back to the hotel, have a little water. Yeah, you can see it rained a lot yesterday. All right. Let's see here. And just like that, we're back at the hotel. And from my room, I've even got a, a view, albeit uh, not a great view but I can see the uh, water. So, call it ocean view. 
for $30 a night. <sighs> All right, so headed back out, headed back out on the town. Been a long day swimming and yeah, literally almost seeing three people drown. So I did a little research on, uh, you know, saving drowning victims and identifying drowning victims. And well, I learned uh, exactly what I experienced because the reality of it is they say that a drowning victim can't flail their arms up and or call for help. They're so panicky and may have already swallowed water and they're just not able to uh, they're not able to ask for help. So I'm glad that I was able to call out for help for them, realize something was not right. And after the first person that I tried to uh, kind of save, um, hola. Yeah, after the first person that I attempted to rescue myself without a flotation device or anything, um, I learned that, well, just like what Wiki, Wiki something told me, there was like these three steps of identifying and uh, saving a drowning victim. Well, one of them said, one of the, uh, the steps said, do not attempt to rescue a drowning victim because they will try to use you as a flotation device. And that's exactly what happened. So as I was trying to help her, uh, you know, I immediately became exhausted. So I called to the lifeguards and uh, three or four of them came out there with their flotation devices and rescued the, the woman. And the kid that she was with he seemed to be okay, kind of swimming all right. But uh, a guy on a surfboard came up and was able to help him. So then I went out later and I was playing in the waves. And I think what happens is these people, they kind of conjugate in groups. And, you know, if they see somebody that's going further out, they kind of follow along. But there comes a point where your feet can no longer touch the ground. And once that happens and the rip current starts to move you around, that's when danger sets in. That's the most dangerous point. And I, I knew it from the first experience. So when I saw this guy kind of saying a little something and chuckling, like he wanted to ask for help, but he didn't know how or he couldn't, you know, because I'm a foreigner. And once I saw the uh, the waves kind of picking up and kind of moving him for, uh, further and further out, I realized he was in danger. So what I did is uh, I flailed my arms uh, to the uh, lifeguards. And I'm glad that before I went out, I checked, I checked where the, their post was because I was kind of curious. The first time I didn't see them and you know I was looking around just kind of wondering where they're where they're posted up and they really just have one post there and it's like four lifeguards which is probably not enough for the amount of people that are there i think they need a like a boat or a jet ski as well to uh help them out because if uh, somebody got pretty far out there they they themselves swimming will put themselves at risk so anyway then they uh, saved another guy. So, yeah. Swimming in uh, surf-like conditions, you know, for surfing with the waves, is uh, quite dangerous for that reason.